Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the Dell Hybrid Studio Mini 6222 desktop PC. Back when it was first released in 2008, it would have cost you somewhere between $499 and $1000. Depending on the spec you wanted, that included a customizable case in a range of colours. It was priced very similar here in the UK too, but we all know that Dell never really had the best pricing strategy, especially when you could build a mini ITX PC of your own that would probably have cost half the price and had double the power. To the average home user though, these represented convenience and quirkiness, a mini setup that was the size of the even more expensive Mac Mini but with Windows, the operating system that by now most people were using in their homes. It also consumes just 26 watts of power, idle and is pretty much silent. So all of these Dell Mini PCs aren't upgradable. What you order is what you're stuck with until it becomes obsolete. And given that it uses pretty weak laptop components, even when you opt for the top of the range options, that would happen fairly quickly, unless you're just using it for its intended purpose, internet browsing. So our unit here sits somewhere in the middle of the road spec-wise. It features an Intel Pentium T3400 clocked at 2.16 GHz, 2 GB of DDR2 SD RAM clocked at 667 megahertz, a 320 gigabyte hard drive, and mobile Intel 965 Express graphics. Uh oh, this one has been upgraded from Windows Vista to 7 along the way somewhere, which is a welcome change. Now you're not short of input options either with 5 USB ports, HDMI, DVI and an 8-in-1 card reader as well as a DVD drive hidden in the front too. So I'll admit, for general home use this is pretty cool and if you were to upgrade this to Windows 10 it would make a great little secondary system or even a basic office PC. But what if you get the urge to play some games? Can it handle it? Well let's find out, after all, I know it's the part we've all been waiting for. So let's drop this thing in at the deep end with Crisis. Fraps isn't displayed here because it kind of crushed the game, but I think it was obvious that this thing wouldn't handle Crisis. So let's go a little easier on it. So Half-Life 2 here with 1024x768 resolution and low settings sees a return of mid-twenties in terms of frame rate. It hits 30 sometimes and the game is playable in some areas, just not most of the time, which is unfortunate. Dropping things down to 800 by 600 didn't really make a difference. It's a similar situation with Doom 3. At 1024 by 768 again and the game runs around 30 FPS with sort of what I like to call unpredictable frame rates. And although just walking around was smooth enough, with Doom being quite action packed it probably isn't the best idea to play it using a system like this. So finally we've got Far Cry, the original game. It runs at 1024 by 768 once again, but this time we see around 30 to 35 frames per second with everything on low. Sure it doesn't look the best, but it is definitely playable. It's interesting to note that the $60 Windows tablet we tested a few videos ago actually outperformed this system, so that might be a better option. Of course, a desktop like this is a lot more convenient to use, but it isn't really capable of much more than very basic usage. These days you can find them quite cheaply on eBay at way under both $100 and pounds, so if you're looking for a cheap home desktop that uses little power and space, then it may be worth considering. If you want to at least be able to play a few games though, even older ones, then your money is better spent elsewhere. It does look pretty cool though, and that's probably what drew consumers to it in the first place. So guys, thank you so much for watching this little sort of review of the Dell Studio Hybrid 6222. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy it all that much. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and as always, I'll see you all in the next one.